everyone, my name is Ivana Provenza and today we're going to talk about the product landing page of FreeCodeCamp, the part of responsive web design. So basically in this project we're going to build this page in here that you're seeing, original trombone, we have this nav bar here with features, how it works and pricing. Then we're going to have here this a kind of a form to get the email address. Here we have a part for the features where we have this image and this text. Then if we click in how it works, for example, we are redirected to this video and then if we click in pricing, we are redirected to this three cards here where we can think the, the price for these instruments okay and this is pretty much what we're gonna build we're gonna build here in this empty page all right but the files we're gonna use in the frequent camp part the index.html and styles.css because in the future we have to follow here some user stories to pass all the tests okay so knowing this let's just start so like we know we have to start our file with doc type html to tell the browser that we're working with an html file and then we have to open up our html file tag and i'm gonna say here english that our page will be built in English. Like we know, HTML normally contains two tags, the head and the body. The head is the part that is not visual, and the body is the part that is visual. And what this means not visual? So basically here we're gonna add the links for with other files, or for example, we're gonna add the title of the tab. So let's do this title. This will be the title of the tab, like I said. And here I'm gonna call product landing page. And then I'm also gonna link our HTML file with our styles.css that we're gonna work. So here a link, the relationship will be style sheet and the href, href, it's the name of the file styles.css. Okay, then the body will be everything that is visual. So everything that we're seeing here will be our body, okay? Let's start reading here the user story. So basically in here, we're gonna have a header element with the corresponding ID header. You can see an image in the header and blah, 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 the navbar. So basically these first five items are telling us that we're gonna build this navbar, this header, where in the left, we're gonna contain the image of the logo. Okay, I just got the link for this logo. Okay, so we're gonna add in here. And in the right part, we're gonna have an unordered list where the list items will be the nav bar here the nav link so once we click we're gonna be redirected to this part okay so let's just start it's important to have this in mind so the first thing i'm gonna do i'm gonna create here a header and i'm gonna give id equals to header like they're asking us to do and inside of this header we're gonna contain one div for the logo and then a nav for the uh the nav bar so here div and let's see div class equals to logo and inside of this, I'm going to add an image. So here I'm going to have an image tag. ID here, they're telling us to use the ID header-img. The alt message, I'm going to say here logo. And the source, src, will be the source of our image. So in here, I'm going to copy this source. And I'm going to paste in here. So let's see. If I open up the preview, now we're able to see the image. All right, so we're going to fix here the, the, the size and all those things. But first, I want to start creating here the HTML for this part. So in one side, we have the div logo. In the other side, we're going to have our nav. So our nav uh, element here. And we're going to have an ID nav bar. Equal, ID equals to nav bar. Great. You can see at least three clickable elements inside the nav element, each with the case nav-link. So inside of this nav, I'm going to create an unordered list, UL, and I'm going to make the list items with this ID nav-link, okay? And then I'm going to write it down, the message. So let me just copy and paste. Actually, yes, let me just copy and paste in here. Let's see, the first element is features. So here I'm gonna write it down the word features. Okay, and if we see, it will open up features in here. But how can we make this clickable? Before I copy and paste the other ones, we're gonna wrap this list list item inside of a, a, a tag, okay? Because the a tag will allow us to click and be redirected. So here I'm gonna do a href, and right now I'm gonna leave this empty, okay? But in the future, we're gonna return in here to finish. And I'm wrapping this way. And like we can see, now we have a hyperlink, okay? So this is pretty much what we're gonna do. Now we're able to copy and paste. So here I'm gonna add the message how it works. How it works. And the other one will be the message pricing. Okay, so like we can see, we have this. 
Now, how can we make our project look the way that it's supposed to? So let's start manipulating. We are gonna start working in our styles.css with our body tag. Okay, so I'm gonna let this open. So I'm gonna start here with body and I wanna change the background color because if we see here, this is, is we have this kind of gray in here. So I'm gonna use background color and I'm gonna use the, the number EEE. -E -E. So let's see, if I open up, now we have the same background color. Then I want to change the, the font family in here, all right? And I search it a little bit and we know that the font family is Lato. So here I'm going to write it down, Lato and Sans Serif. Oops. And then if we open up, now we have this different font, font family. And this is exactly what they are expecting us to do. Now we're going to work with the header. Let's start positioning things, okay? But first, let me change the width of our image. So here, if I use the ID header image, we can resize this. So here I'm going to say width 200 pixels, for example. And let's see. Now we have this size. I'm going to change in the future, but right now I want to live this way. Now let's worry about the header. Okay, and then we return for the image. So here in the header, our idea, our goal is to put everything in a row, correct? So here we're going to use display flex. So we're here we're using flex box. We're going to say when we use display flex, now they are in a row, but I want to be specific. I'm going to do here flex direction row so we don't lose this. Okay, now I want to put the part of the image in the left and the uh, nav bar in the right. So I'm going to use here justify content, space evenly, space around, sorry, space around. And it will create a space in between them. And they're going to put in the left and in the right. This is pretty much what we need. And then I'm going to add in here a align item center because I want to be sure that they are in the center in the vertical. Align items center. Okay, so this is pretty much what we have. Now we're going to work here with the unordered list, our nav link. Actually, before we start working with our nav link, I'm going to change some things. So we want to make this image responsive. So I'm going to add a max width of 300 pixels. Okay, so this will be our max width. And I'm going to add a width of 100% and a height of 100%. So this means that we want 100% in our div logo. Okay, and it's not changing much. Then that we did this, now we're going to work with our nav. Okay, our nav item. So I'm gonna use here nav bar. Okay, and the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna change the font weight just to make this bolder. And then I'm not sure if we're able to see in here right now. But now let's focus on the unordered list. So here I'm gonna open up a UL and I want to put this in a row as well because in here right now they're in a column, but we're expecting to do this in a row. So I'm gonna use here display flex, the same thing as we did, and flex direction row. And let's see in here, now they are in a row. But we don't have a space between them. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna create this space between uh, using the space around. So here, justify content, space around. And let's see what happens. Basically, it's not changing much, right? I believe we need to work with our div logo to make it work. So I'm gonna open up here logo, the class logo, and we're gonna add a width of 6VW and VW is basically 60% of all of our screen in the width okay so this is how it looks like right now all right actually the position in here is pretty good so in here they are all in front of the other but we need to change the width to make it work so here in our nav bar I'm gonna add a width of 40VW and then we're gonna have a space around it Okay, great. Now I was just noticing here that we added the, the ID nav link, but it should be class. Okay, so I'm gonna change here to class. And we're gonna cut this from our LI and we're gonna insert in the href. Okay, so I'm gonna insert in here our class. Great. Now we're gonna start manipulating. The first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna remove this bullet point we have in front of our list item. So in here, I'm gonna open up a LI and I'm gonna say list style none. And this will remove the bullet point for us. Okay, now I want to remove this style here that we have with the with the hyperlink. So we're gonna work with the nav link class. So here nav link, and I'm gonna add here color black. Okay, and then we're gonna add this text decoration none, and this will remove the decoration that we have in the hyperlink. So right now we have this way. Okay, and I think this is pretty much what we need if we think about we don't need any extra part here I'm just gonna change to 35 instead of instead of 40 because I want to put a little bit more to the left and I'm gonna add here a margin right 
of 10 pixels, for example. Let's see. It looks a little bit better, but it's not needed. I will re remain the same because I, I'm thinking right now that we have to make this responsive. And if we add this margin in here, we might have some issues. So this is pretty good, right? It looks exactly like we have in our nav bar. So this is how we're going to let right now. Then we have to work with this part here of the heading, the form and the button. So let's start. So now we're going to work with this part in here. So we're going to create a new session that I'm going to call hero. And here we have this H2, the form and the button. And we're going to create this right now. Then we're going to take a look in here what they are expecting us to do because they're telling us to use form and send this form to a specific URL and use the IDs in here. But don't worry. So after our header, we're going to create here a session and I'm going to give ID hero. Okay session then inside of this session we have our h2 where we're gonna write it down this message that we saw let me shrink this part then we're gonna open up our form because like we saw in here we have a input email and a button that is another input type submit so in our form they are telling us to give in here an id equals to form and they are telling us to send the data to this specific url so i'm gonna copy this url and how can we send the data we're gonna use the the attribute called action and the action will work that every time we click the submit button we're gonna send the data to this specific url and we add the url in here okay then we have an input type equals to email they're telling us this input type email we're gonna use id email okay and here we should have a placeholder to let the user know what is going on so here i'm gonna have a placeholder and in here i'm gonna add the message enter your email address enter your email address great so let's see how it looks like this is what we have in here then we're gonna uh then we have to do one extra thing so the input field the user's validation confirm that we entered basically we're only gonna be able to send the data if we have this email address so we're gonna use the attribute required and the required means that we are required to type in any email if we want to submit okay and now we have our input type equals to submit that will be our submit button and in here they're telling us to use id equals to submit and in here let me see what what is the message get started so if we want to get uh, put a message in here we use value for the button okay and here i'm gonna say get started and let's see how it looks like right now so if i take a look we have this type in here okay the enter your the message enter your email address and get started so now let's start manipulating here it should be this way okay so the first thing i'm gonna work with this div to make everything in a column all right, so let me shrink these instructions and open up the style. And basically in here, I'm gonna start working with the ID hero. So here, hero, okay? And in here, I'm gonna say display flex, flex direction column. And let's see what we have so far. So they are in a column, okay? We have to do the same for the form. So here I'm gonna do a, a comma form. Okay, let's see. And now the form is the same, but we're gonna change the width, don't worry. And I'm gonna use here justify content center to put in the center. Okay, let's see. And they are in the center in the vertical alignment, but I wanna put them in the center in the horizontal. So align items center. Great, let's see. And now they are in the center as well. Okay, so it's looking pretty similar, right? Now we need to work with the input and the button. So for the input in here, we're gonna make this a little bigger, the height and the width, okay? So for this input, I'm gonna use the hash email because the ID email is the one that is working with this input. I'm gonna give a max width of 275 pixels. Let's see. And it didn't change much. And in here, I'm gonna give a width of 100%. Let's see, I think it will be too big or not if i put in here it's not changing the id right i think i have to do in here hero input type equals to email to manipulate this email in here so let's see if we're able now let me put background color pink just to check if something is going on okay so we are manipulating in here but it's not changing the width if I put here 375 pixels, it's not changing as well. Okay, let's try to work with the height. So if I put in here 80 pixels, let's, let's see what happens. Okay, it's too much. I think 50 will be a good number. 50 is too much as well. 30 pixels, let's see. Okay, I'm gonna try to change in here to uh, give a mean width. So here, mean width of 100 pixels. Let's see. Okay. Why is this is not changing? If I put in here 500 pixels, it's not changing. 500, if I put in here 300 pixels. Let's see if something happens. Okay, things are starting to change. So here I'm gonna put a width of 200 
and 75 pixels oops and the max width will be 275 pixels okay and that's pretty much what we have in here now let's work with the button so to work with this button we're gonna give a margin in here all right so in here i'm gonna use the same hero input type equals to submit and we're gonna start manipulating so basically in here like you can see we have a max width of 150 pixels let's see okay then we're gonna change here the width to 100% and I want to change here the height to 30 pixels the same one that we did for the input besides that I want to change the background color to this yellow and in here the yellow it's this one f1 c4 0 f okay and this is the yellow part and we have this in here great now I'm just gonna change one thing in here I'm gonna give a margin bottom of 10 pixels okay so we have this spacing great probably 15 great now the button we, we can make we can improve the style so i'm gonna remove here the border do you see the border is too weird so here i'm gonna say border none all right great and our get started should be bold right so here i'm gonna try to add a font weight of 900 let's see so if i change here the font weight we see this way i think we have to change the font size as well so here i'm gonna change here to the font size to 1 em and if we take a look now things are pretty similar correct so here we can check that they have the color the same the same thing that's great we have the same thing in here in both files now we're gonna start working with features so now we're gonna work with these three parts in here. So you can think about three divs, three main divs, one, two, and three. Where we have in each div, we have one icon in the left, and in the right, we have the heading and the paragraph, okay? So how can we start with this? First, I'm gonna create a main div after this session that I'm gonna call container. And in this container, I'm gonna add the three parts in here that we're gonna link with our nav bar, okay? So in here, I'm gonna have the container. Then I'm gonna create a div with ID feature, okay? ID equals to feature. And why ID? Because I want to be able to click in here in features and go to our div, the corres corresponding div, okay? So here I'm gonna call features. And actually, I'm gonna do the same for the other three, okay? So we already link our nav bar. So here, I will, I'm gonna call how it works, how it works all in one word okay and here i'm gonna go call pricing then how can we link with our href here i'm gonna do a hash features the same name of the id that we give for each div here how it works and here pricing all right so this way we're linking our navbar in here the same way they're expecting right now we won't be able to go because we don't have the the, the div but soon we will be able to check this then now let's continue with our feature so in our feature we have three main divs okay that i'm gonna call grid so here i'm gonna have a div class equals to grid i'm gonna do only one and for the other ones we're gonna copy and paste and in this grid we have the left part that is the icon and the right part there is the text so here i'm gonna have a div class equals to icon and in here i'm gonna have a div class equals to text okay so if we want to work with creating here this font awesome what we have to do you're going to search for font awesome icons all right this is a really good library to use icons in our code and you're going to click here in documents here in documents you can click and then you have to set up your project to start working with font awesome on it okay so if you click here set up a kit it will redirect you to create an account and that's okay because it's a free account and that's fine once you create your account you're going to receive a link okay i received mine here and i'm pasting there's a script blah 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 blah. okay and you can use it then you are allowed to make the integration with this library so this is basically what we're doing with css that we are creating this connection between our html file and css here we're doing the same connection but instead of the css we're making a connection between html and icons okay and why font awesome is so good because in here we're able to search for example for fire and it will give us uh, some suggestions of icons that we could use and then we can search for example this fire flame and curve and we copy the item here and if we paste in the icon part we can see the icon of our fire okay so this is really good we're gonna use this font awesome then we need to get the message of this premium materials okay i'm gonna put in an h2 so here instead of our div text we have this h2 and i'm gonna say premium materials and then we're gonna have a paragraph where i'm gonna copy the text we have in here okay 
And then once we do this, we can see that this is how it looks like. We're going to fix in a bit, don't worry. But I'm going to copy and paste three times this div, two times, sorry, the div grid, because we're going to create the other two divs. And here I'm going to change the message. So instead of here, I'm going to get fast shipping. And here I'm going to get this paragraph. And we have to change as well the icons, okay? So stay tuned because I'm gonna change the icons. And in here, the other one is quality assurance and this message, quality assurance. Quality assurance and this message. Now let's get the icons for each one of them. For the first one is a truck. So I'm gonna write in here truck and we're gonna search for one icon that is exactly the same. So if I search in here, oops. If I search in here truck, I'm gonna get this first one, for example, and I'm just gonna copy and paste here. Instead of fire, I'm gonna add this one, right? So if we check, here we have our truck, and the other one will be a battery. So I'm gonna search for battery. battery. And I'm gonna get this full battery here, and I'm gonna add. Now, once I change in here, we're gonna start working with the CSS to make it work the way that it's supposed to. Okay, so now we can see in here. So let's work with our grid. First, the grid will be designed in the same row, right? Because we can see in here, they are in the same row. So actually, I'm gonna start, yes, with this. So here, id, sorry, dot grid, I'm gonna do a display flex, and flex direction will be a row. Okay, so if we take a look at this right now, I think they're in the same row. Let's do a align items center to check dot grid. Okay, they are in the same row, great. Now we're gonna give some uh, justify content here and I'm gonna give here a space bit around again. Let's use a space around for the whole project. And that's fine, okay, because I'm gonna change the size of the grid. So grid, I'm gonna have a width of 80% and a max width of 500 pixels. Let's see. Okay, I think 500 is too little. If I add here 80 pixels, let's see, it's looking a little bit better. All right. Um, if I add in here 100%, let's see, nothing changes. And this is pretty much what we have. Okay, so now we're gonna work with creating this uh, space for the left and right. I'm not sure actually what is going on in here. If I remove this, let me see. Okay, I wanna put them in the center. So here, justify content center. Let's see what happens. So now they're in the center, but they are not aligned in the correct way, right? So I'm gonna give a max width of 800 pixels. All right, and a width of 100%. Let's see. Okay, now I'm going to work with features because the features will make our grid in the center. Okay, so here dot features. I'm going to use display flex. The flex direction in this case will be a column because we want the grids to be in a column. Column. Okay, so we have this. All right. And I'm going to try to use here justify content center. Oops. To check if they go to the center. No, they aren't and align items, let's see. I think we have to add a width of 100% as well. And nothing is changing. What if I give a max width of 1000 pixels? What happens? Let me remove this from here just to check what is affecting what. So now we're gonna start working with manipulating the icon, okay? So basically in here, I'm gonna work with the FA.solid and here I'm gonna give a color of dark orange, okay? And if we take a look, the FA solid is the same that three I this, the three icons have. Do you see? FA solid and FA solid. And if we take a look in here, we're changing the color. Now I'm gonna change the size of this. So if I do font size, and I'm gonna try to put in here a, a, a hundred pixels. I think it will be too much, but let's see. Okay, I think it's too much, like I mentioned. Let's try to use 70 and see what happens. And here I think it still is too much. I'm gonna use 50. It looks a little bit better. Then I wanna create some spacing in here because it's too close to each other, right? So here I'm gonna use the dot icon and I'm gonna give a width of 15VW. Let's see. Okay, we have this space in here, that's good. I wanna center this text. Let me see if I'm, I am able. If I do in here text align center, let's see if this is in the center. No, it didn't. So let's try to center using the icon. So here, display flex, justify content 
center. Let me see. Okay, now it's in the center, great. And I'm gonna try to remove in here in this grid this justify content. Let's see if I remove from here. And if I remove from here the align item center as well. Um, let me add the align item center in here. Align item center. Let's see. All right, now they are aligned again. And I think this is pretty much what we're gonna try to do right now, okay? In here, let me see if I remove this again what happens and if I add this in here. Okay, it's not changing much. We now need to try to put things more in the right, in the center, correct? So here, features, we have everything in the center, okay. I'm gonna try to remove the margin here to see what happens and the padding. Okay, so we have this right now, all right? And this is pretty much what is going on. If I click in features, we're going here to features. Okay, it's not exactly what they, we were expecting to have. Probably if I change here to 80, let's see what happens. And here max width will be 800 pixels. Okay, I am not able to change this to 700, let's see. And yes, let's leave this way because this is just a little detail, but we're able to do it in here. Now that we're done with this part, let's work with the how it works. Because now we're gonna work with this image, this video in here. Now for the video, we're gonna use one tag that we call iframe, okay? And you can search on W3Schools. Basically, this iframe will create this structure for us, okay? The video where we can click and it will start uh, playing the video for us, okay? So I'm gonna copy this tag, all right? And then we're gonna manipulate the way that we want. So we're gonna add in here, instead of how it works, I'm gonna give here ID frame, okay? Here, they're telling us to use an ID video. So here, ID equals to video. We have source, and the source will be the image, the video we want to add. So what we have in here, in, we have we're seeing this video, but we want to add this video here. So I'm gonna click in copy link, and I'm gonna add in here the video. Let's see if it appears. It's crashed, and it's fine because we need to manipulate in a way that we are able to click on it. All right, but we're gonna fix this in a bit. Don't worry. Then uh, we need to work with the width and the height. So here the height I'm gonna give 315 and I think the width, let's see, 315. The width I'm gonna give a 500 and just let's see what, how it looks like. Okay, so we have this in here. Now we need to make this work, right? The title will be product video. Okay, and now let's make this video work. So now if we want to use this video in here, we have to manipulate the way that we want, okay? So you need to use in here www.youtube, write it down correctly. So we can't use this youtube.b, it's youtube, we have to use. Then we're gonna add a dash no cookies, okay, dot com, that is slash embed, slash the source that we have in here. Okay, and I think this might work. Otherwise, we can add one extra parameter. Then after the link we're using, we're going to use a question mark relationship equals to zero and control equals to zero and show info equals to zero. So here we're giving all the data we need for this too many requests it's telling us in here. So let me see. Mm, I put no cookies, but it should be no cooking. And now it's working. So basically we need to add the controls for this video when we're getting the link, okay? And you need the word embed and the word YouTube, no cookies. And now we're able to see that the video is in here, okay? We can remove the, the border in here if we use frame border equals to zero. All right, let's see. Now we don't have the border anymore, great. It looks like this, but now we have to put in the middle, right? So I'm gonna use the style for the uh, how it works. So let me scroll down. This is the iframe. Now I'm gonna have in here a dot, sorry, hash how it, it works. And I'm gonna give a margin of 30 pixels. Okay, let's see in here. All right, we have this margin. And I wanna display in the center. So here display flex, justify content center, and align items center. So now it will be in the center in all the directions. And we can see in here right now, all right? So this is pretty much what we need. Now we're gonna work with our final part, that is this pricing. But before we do, let's test the hyperlink, okay? So if I click in features, it redirects us to features. And if I click to how it works, it redirects us to here, okay? Now let's do the final touch. 
So for this, we're gonna work in here in our pricing, okay? And I'm gonna create three divs, all right? Because it, let's see the image in here again, the, the page in here. We have three cards. So I'm gonna create one, the structure for one card, and then I'm just gonna copy and paste for the other ones. Okay, so we're gonna work with this card in here. And for the structure of the card, I'm gonna give a class equals true uh, product, okay? And then inside of this product, oops, Instead of this product, we have here kind of a level where we say the name of the project and the product, and then we have the body of our card. We're gonna split into the, these two pieces. So I'm gonna give a div class equals to level. And why I'm giving creating a div? Because I wanna make this gray, okay? And then I'm gonna have a H2 for the price. So here's 600 H2. Actually in here, let me write it down the message. Here's saying tenor trombone okay here we have tenor trombone and here we have the same i'm gonna put all in uppercase now we have our h6 here our h2 with the price right and then we have here the paragraph that we can work actually we can work or with paragraph or with an ordered list ordered list what do you prefer so here i'm gonna create an ordered list and the list items in here i'm gonna write it down lauren ipsum Here's just a regular message. And we have how many messages? One, two, three, four. So I'm gonna add four. Okay, so this is pretty much what we have so far. And then I'm gonna add here this button, this select button. So in the end, I'm gonna add a button class equals to BTN, for example. And here, I'm gonna close this button. And for the button, we have to put the word select inside select okay so this is pretty much what we have in here we're gonna copy and paste this three times okay for the the div product great and i'm gonna change here instead of tenor it will be valve and the value here it's 1200 and for the other one here we're gonna use the word bass and here it's 900 yes so we have this three structured in a column now i want to put this in a row Okay, so we're gonna start working with our pricing div. So here I'm gonna use hash pricing, oops, pricing. And here I'm gonna say display flex, flex direction row. Okay, let's see. And we have this in here, now they are in a row, okay? I'm gonna give a width of 100%, okay? And I'm gonna use justify content, space, around let's see if i use the space around in here now they are this way okay so i like the way that it looks like in here and i'm gonna give a margin top of 60 pixels just to give more space in here between the image and the text okay so now we have this structure now let's work with the product itself okay creating this line here this is square basically so to do this we're gonna work with product so dot product okay and here we're gonna put everything in a column as well they are already in a column but i want to center them in the middle so here display flex flex direction column and i want to use align items center let's see okay so now everything is in the center all right not the unordered list but we're gonna fix this let me try with text align center in here okay didn't change much i'm gonna add a margin bottom as well of 90 pixels okay now we have this extra spacing then i'm gonna calculate the width and in here we're gonna use the calc method that will be responsive okay so here the width will be a we're gonna calculate we're gonna get a hundred percent of the width and we're gonna divide by three okay so this will be the width of each part and then we're gonna give a border in here so border one pixel solid black and we're gonna have now this square that we're seeing in here okay great we also need to give some padding i believe so i'm gonna give a padding actually a margin here of 20 pixels okay let's see now they have this space between them and let me think about it i'm gonna give a border radius of three pixels just to make it a little bit rounded in here in the corner okay I'm gonna get in here the width uh, space around. Let me change to space between, and then we can check the difference. Okay, what if I use here space evenly? Okay, nothing is changing pretty much. In here, I'm gonna calculate instead of 180 
20%. Just to shrink a little bit our cards. Okay, great. Now we're gonna work with the level. Okay, so for the level, I wanna give this background color here in a darker gray. Okay, so for the level here, dot level, I'm gonna give, let me just double check. I'm gonna give a background color of hash DDD. Okay a color black and i want to give a padding 15 pixels and zero for the horizontal alignment so this is what we have in here the level should be a hundred percent right so let me see width would be a hundred percent let's double check okay i'm gonna give a height of 30 pixels all right and i'm gonna put this in the center so let me see if i use a padding 15 pixels what if i add this padding and zero let's see okay so now it fit great actually i'm gonna remove the height in here let me check if i remove the height all right so we have this exactly what we were expecting and i'm gonna change the font weight okay so font weight will be here 700 because it is pretty bold if you take a look from here all right great now we're gonna work with our uh h2 actually the h2 is already good now we're gonna work with the unordered list in here because for some reason the alignment is not that good so i'm gonna create here a ol and i'm gonna do a text align center let's see what happens because i don't like the alignment we're having in here left let me see um what if i add in here ol li let's see nothing is changing I can give in here a center. Let me change. Let's let's see if it's working. If I give here color pink, let's see if it's changing the color here. Okay. Now instead of color pink, if I add a margin right 10 pixels, let's see if this works. So, all right. Text align center. Let's see why this is not working. If I put this in the right, nothing happens. For some reason, this is being affected, but it's okay. I'm gonna make by changing here the margin okay and it's almost in the center all right let me remove the color and this is pretty much what we have in here okay then i'm gonna create in here a the button that we're missing so here i'm gonna do dot btn and we're gonna do some styles similar to what we did for the other one so here i want a background color of the same color we used before so f1 c4 0 f great i'm gonna change i'm gonna give a margin 15 pixels and zero and font weight 400 and i'm gonna change here i'm gonna remove the border otherwise it will get ugly okay and i'm also gonna change the width because i think this is not that good the width that we have in here so in this case i'm gonna give in here a width of uh, i don't know 50 percent let's see how it looks like i think it's too big Probably if I shrink this to 30, it will be a little bit better. And I'm gonna change the height as well. So here height, I want this to be 30 pixels. Let's see. All right, it looks pretty good. Okay, and we have the select in here. I'm gonna change the font size to 1 EM. All right, so now this is what we have. Our project is looking exactly the same. Okay, if I click in pricing, we go there. All right, we have the footer, but the footer, I don't think it's needed in here in the instructions. And I think the video is already too long. So we're gonna check in here if we're missing something. Basically, they're telling us the only thing we're missing is adding the uh, one media query. So what am I gonna do? If I click here in preview, things are looking nice. Okay, the one thing that I wanna do, I think it's too little. Yes, okay. The one thing that I want to do in here is I want to put this card in here in a row, in a column, not in a row, okay? So how can we do this? Let me remove here the preview. Here in the pricing, I'm going to add a at media max width of 500 pixels. I want to change here the pricing. So here pricing, I want this to be flex direction column okay so let's work with preview in here if i i think it's too little now if i shrink a little bit okay it's too weird <laughs> we can work with this let's fix so here i want the media query in this case i'm gonna change actually more things i'm gonna change the product so let me remove from here i'm gonna add in the end okay so in here i'm gonna change the btn actually the main width of this will be uh 100 pixels let's see okay the mean width of product mean width of product will be 300 pixels all right okay 
actually, let me change in here. I'm gonna add this dot product. I'm gonna give a width of 300 pixels. And let's see how it works. In here, I'm gonna change to 700. Okay, all right. So this is pretty much what we have. And I'm gonna add in the pricing uh, justify content center. Let's see, no. I'm gonna add in here uh, align item center. Align items center. And now they are in the center, okay? So this way we're changing. If we expand, it will be in a row. If we shrink, this will be in a column. And you can do this for the other parts as well, all right, if you think that it's needed. But now let's run the final part. So let's run the test and check if we're passing on it. So basically here we're passing. Let's see where we're not passing here. We should have a name attribute of email. This is good. I forgot to do this. So let me remove this tile. In here, in our form, I need to give an attribute name equals to email. Great. And let's see the other one. Uh, your navbar should always be at the top of the viewport. And we can check this in one second. So let me just run again with this new check, new testing. So we pass. Now we need to pass the other one. So I'll be fixing in just one second. So for this part, what they are telling us to do. Basically, we need to scroll down and the, the, the navbar here should be fix it okay that's the main idea and ours is not doing this right now so if we open up when we scroll down we can't see the nav bar anymore so how can we do this here in the header we're gonna add position fixed and if we try it out again if i scroll down our nav bar remains in here okay that's pretty much what we need so now that we added here the position fix and we just need to add this, we, once we run the test, we're gonna pass it. Okay, so now we're done. If you enjoyed this content, please give us a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel. If you have any question, you can send here in the comment. And I hope to see you in the next video. Bye bye. If you would like to have full support from programming expert via Telegram group and group coaching, check the description below.